It doesn't sound as strong in 16-bit. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Messenger. In the last part, uh, we got rezzed up a little bit, and now we're in hell. The Underworld is the standard lava level in terms of theming. Red, a lot of lava, the lava's all instant kill, fireball is jumping out, the usual stuff, really. Though it does have one pretty unique gimmick to it that we'll be seeing later on in the stage. With that said, we're on the third screen, that's where the shopkeeper usually is, so let's go talk to them. So about the current area. Welcome to the lion's den. Oh, I didn't see any lions. No, I meant... Uh, never mind. This heat's almost unbearable. Come on, I'm happy to avoid certain cliches, but to think we wouldn't end to have lava at the end of your epic quest is pushing it. Fair enough. Have any stories to share? Of course, here's one for you. There once was a guy visited by a succubus. Far from being that kind of demon, she offered him a unique chance to visit hell as a tourist. Very adventurous by nature, he jumped right into the portal. They arrived in a room where giant cauldrons boiled over bonfires. They contained people where little demons with pikes were sitting on the rim to push anyone who tried to escape back inside. Who's in that cauldron? The man asked his succubus tour guide. This one? That's where liars and cheaters end up, she explained. And this one over here, she continued, that's for people who hunt for sport. Aghast, the man noticed another cauldron, much bigger than the other ones, and devoid of any demon sitting on its rim. Indeed, that one cauldron seemed to self-regulate. People were pulling back in anyone who tried to escape. And who's this cauldron for? He asked, curious as to who could be so stubborn in their ideology they'd rather hurt themselves than rethink the worldview. Oh, that cauldron? The succubus mutes. That's for people who think the order doesn't apply anymore when another line opens up at the market. The end. Okay, now you're just using the platform to vent. What's wrong with you? Are you that guy? Which guy? The guy who's fifth in line but rushes to be first when the new line opens up? Oh, right. Different timeline. Never mind. I have a feeling I know what happened to the writer the day that they wrote that. <laughs> that's that's one of my favorites. Uh, despite the lava level, though, the lava itself is only an active hazard that's rising and lowering in a few rooms. For the most part, it's just there to be as a portal for the fireballs, which even then you use them for cloud stepping. A lot of the platforming here is a lot of what we've seen before. Cloud steps, guys, or so on and so forth. A lot of the way I like to look at this game is that it slowly introduces mechanics that just continuously reuses and refines and makes more difficult. The one true gimmick to this level is those demon heads we just saw. The way they work is that each of them is technically a lantern that alternates in sets. For instance, as you can see there, there are two on the bottom, one on the top. The two on the top are all, or two on the bottom are always active, but the one you hit them, the one on the top becomes active, but the ones on the bottom deactivate. Yeah, I think of them as just on and off switches. You'd be surprised how interesting a gimmick that can be with the cloud steps. It's just a shame this is the only level that does anything with them. They never come back. I mean, of course, they would be a bit out of place visually, but I feel like they could reclassify that visually enough to work in different levels. After all, they make different lanterns for practically every single level. It's always it's always sad seeing a platforming element go underutilized, no matter what game it's in. Unless it's annoying anti-gravity, like a uh, certain stage I'm thinking of in Sonic Adventure 2. In which case, I'm glad that was underutilized. With that, it's about time I buy something else here in the shop, finally. Let's buy Meditation. This is one of the most useful abilities in the game. You see, prior to this, if you touched, touched a checkpoint, your HP got restored, I believe, up to three. I forget if your key charges got restored at all. But now that we got the meditation ability, our key charges will be restored to max, I believe, and our health will be restored to five. Just given the higher ratio of health we have at this point, that is surprisingly useful. Also, that jump cut was because I tried backtracking thinking I missed something, but no, I'm thinking of later in the game. There's a couple of times I do that uh, throughout the main games, just because... Sometimes my brain has trouble figuring out where I am in the game relative for some reason. Also, I should note, uh, these spike wheels are not instant kill from my memory. The only ones that are are the pink ones back in the Tower of Time because they're the lasers. Also, not gonna lie, not really feeling the Underworld music. I like the, the like the, the second part of the song coming up right about here, but the first and the, the rest of it, eh. It's one of the few songs in the game I'm truly ambivalent to, really. 
Also, I think the lava is rising here, but honestly, if you're good enough at the platforming edge, which you should be at this point because you should have gotten really used to it by now, you seldom see it, so there's not much of a threat here. They probably could have made it rise a little faster. <laughs> not too much, maybe 1.25x its current speed, at least enough to keep it on screen relatively regularly, and it would have been fine. And then speedrunners would still find a way to do what I'm doing because speedrunners are ridiculous. Although now I'm curious, even though I remember watching that one run, what is the speed run for this game looking like? In terms of, like, uh, end time. Obviously there's going to be a couple of categories, I'm not going to talk about all of them for right now. Uh, this... Uh, about 40 minutes uh, without load times for the stuff that uh, we're, we've gone through thus far, more or less. For just the 8-bit section, there's an entirely different category for that, which is only about 30. And that's not counting stuff like New Game Plus, no upgrades, out of bounds, completely shorts and shortens up about 6 minutes. Because there are ways to get out of bounds in this game and clip between objects. I just don't know how to do them because I'm no speedrunner. Though I will say, as someone who goes for platinum trophies semi-regularly on my PlayStation, nothing scares me more than seeing a game with a speedrun achievement. I'm looking at Shovel Knight really hard right now. Like, I love Shovel Knight, but doing a speedrun for that one as someone who doesn't do speedruns was annoying. Don't know if that or the Deathless New Game Plus run where I took care of every single, or I, I broke every single checkpoint was the more annoying run, though. Probably the latter, just because I can die a couple times in the speedrun and still not worry too much. I, I couldn't die in that run period. Of course, I could save Scum, which I did, but... Still, ah, uh, is rather annoying. Don't know why I turned into Shrek for that line, but I did. I won't lie, that power seal took me longer to find than I'd like to admit, because for some reason I just didn't think to go down in the room to get to that corridor. It's always embarrassing when a power-up or an item you missed, like in a Metroid game or something like that, was literally about two feet to the left off screen that you just didn't bother to check on because you think you thought nothing would be there. That's it's always saddening. Either way, we're coming up on the boss, and if you actually look here in the background of the checkpoint room, you can see the demons with the pikes of the cauldrons that the shopkeeper's story was talking about while we were here. By the way, let's talk to them about the boss at least. Looks like the demon general's up next. Be careful out there. I hear he's pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, let's... I, I don't want to say end this because the Demon King's still there, but let's do this. Nowhere left to run, Demon. Why would I run? You stepped right into my trap. We'll see about that. <laughs> we end this now, Champion of the Blue Robes. Alright, Barmathazel is fast. Starting off, you actually can't use your shurikens on him too much because he has a bit of an idle stance where he constantly reflects any projectiles. He has a dash attack he'll do a couple times across the room and then start doing it from floor to ceiling, generally trying to aim for where you are. And while he's doing that, the demons do come out of the holes in the background to alternate so you can, say, cloud step around him, or in the case he does a later attack where he starts floating up on certain parts of the wall, you can then jump up to him using those to actually outright damage him. The timing for getting around him gets harsher the further into the fight you go because he slowly gets faster the more HP you do. This is the attack I'm talking about, by the way. You need to cloud step up to him just to avoid damage. As well, you need to do it to avoid damage, period, because the, the fire doesn't go away until after he does a certain amount of time or damage. The big thing is, you can't actively stun him like we have been able to the previous boss fights. This attack, by the way, you dodge by baiting it one direction, jumping over it, then repeating in the opposite direction. Is that after he does enough of his little charge volleys, he eventually just stops in the center of the room near the throne and is tired. It's a hard boss. I would argue potentially the hardest boss in the game, period, honestly. Just because there is a lot to keep in mind here, and because he's so fast, if you're not keen to learning patterns quickly, you could be here a while. I was there for about 15 minutes my first playthrough. Impossible. I'm the fastest there's ever been. Tell me how to end this curse or else. <laughs> is it that simple in your head, ninja? All of this is bigger than you or me. I'm ending this. Your Demon King is next. Make no mistake, messenger. 
None of us are leaving this place alive. If I can't have this scroll, then it shall be destroyed! Ugh. Oh. Uh, hmm. Well, this is awkward. Uh, there's gotta be a way out of here, right? Right? No, there's there's no way out of here. No matter how fruitlessly we try. Here we go again! What was that sound? Whew! Close call. I got you, buddy. Thanks. I guess we're even now. Oh, yeah. What's your name? Manfred. What kind of name is that for a sky serpent? It's not my birth name, but I always wanted to be a butler. Okay. Well, you should dress for the job you want and not the one you have, right? So? So call me Manfred. All right, Manfred. What did you do before the demons mind controlled you? No time to explain. This is your big moment. My big moment? Uh? Oh, were you hoping for the Western hero? No prophecy for you, worm. Prepare to die. This seems very familiar. You! I see Barmathazel failed me once again. Your reign is over, despot. <laughs> you think this is how it works? Know your place, ninja. Our curse is never ending and your time is up. As for you, soldier, I can't wait for my minions to make short work of you. That was amazing! You're the western hero, right? No, I'm... Did I travel so far east that I made it back to my village from the west? Everything's so different. Did the Tower of Time really send me to the future? I guess this means... Hey, I have an important task for you, I think. Pardon? I mean, take this scroll. You need to carry it across the world to the top of the highest mountain. Really? I'm 100% down to leave this outpost. Yep, a messenger is needed. A uh, messenger? Godspeed! What? Just take the scroll. Hey, shopkeep. And so your time as the messenger is up. What do I do now? Well, you can take a few minutes to appreciate the reveal that it was all just a loop. No way, I still want to be a part of the adventure. Oh, well, get right to that. What do you mean? I mean, it's time. Time for what? For you to finally open the cabinet. Really? Yes, go ahead and open it. Well, I'll talk to you first. Please touch the cabinet. I already told you the cabinet is where it is. Believe me, you are ready for what's in there. There's no skeleton in there, I promise. Hey, do open it. It's not empty. I already unlocked it. Why don't you put that curiosity to good use and open the cabinet already? If you don't open the cabinet soon, you'll have to sit through my boring story. I'm warning you, it's boring. It's philosophical. I'll even remove your ability to skip what I'm saying. This is your last warning. You better make sure you have some time ahead of you if you're gonna keep doing that. Alright, let me share with you my understanding of Mod Madame Melody's work. After observing so many humans over such a long period of time and reading as much as I could, some trends inevitably come up. One thing we all have in common is the need to feel like we have value, power, and abundance in our lives. Now, like many things, there are functional and dysfunctional ways about to go about these. Say you are dysfunctional. Your sense of value may come from the approval of others, making you dependent on seeking attention, begging for others to tell you that you are who you are is adequate. You'll feel good when you receive positive feedback, but always be one negative comment away from having your day ruined. Now about power. Dysfunctional people get a sense of power by exercising control over others, sometimes right down to policing the way they talk or who they engage with. They feel good when they have a weak partner or friend to control, but feel depressed and weak th themselves when no one is around to feed their ego. Their sense of abundance will often come from material things, displaying a high status or promiscuity. Even though it feels great while the money and crowd are there, these lack real depth and the impact of the inevitable downfall would be hard to overstate. For functional people, it is scarcely documented as they are generally busy living a meaningful life. Functional people get their sense of value from an understanding and acknowledgement of their inner worth. 
Their sense of power comes from an ability to self-contain and let others be who they are while protecting themselves when needed. And abundance simply comes from good self-care. Now, all of this makes sense in theory, but the idea is to be able to apply it. For this, you first need to master your emotions. As I understand it, everything you experience is a mix of the big five. Fear, joy, sadness, anger, and shame. The primary colors of our experience, if you will. Mix fear with anger and you get jealousy. Too much sadness and your joy will make you melancholic. The only way to unpack complex emotions is by breaking them down into which of the big five are concerned and deal with each of these individually. Easier said than done, right? Consider haunted house stories for moments. They're always the same, aren't they? It starts off with the optimistic fools moving in. Soon enough, odd things begin to happen and fear ensues for a while. Eventually, the protagonist has had enough and decides to face the ghost. What? What do you want? They will ask, tired of cowering in fear. As it turns out, ghosts usually know what they want, and it's usually the same thing for the person who wronged them to face justice and to then be put to rest. That's usually where the killer faces a trial and the ghost's body is respectfully buried. And just like that, the house becomes a warm haven again. Did you get the metaphors? If you often feel depressed, irritated, or however hindered in your general ability to engage with life, you're just like a haunted house. Your inner child is hurt and will be increasingly uncomfortable to you until you turn around and ask, what, what do you want? If asked honestly, you'll find that the answers are were within you all along and that following through with that inner child's requests is both challenging and life-changing. Only then can you begin the process of discovering your true self and finally get rid of your chains. These are my final ramblings. Please keep in mind that I am but a shopkeeper. Everything I say should be taken with the biggest grain of salt you can find. Please open the cabinet now. Bullshit. <laughs> that was deep. But... So it's just a closet for blue robes? Why yes, what did it look like? Well, don't just stand there. Grab one of your size. Okay. I think I hear someone coming. Get behind the counter. Uh... Sure? Oh, you're kidding me. Ah, the messenger. I wasn't expecting you so soon. What is this place? This is the shop. It doesn't look like a shop. Hey, I said the same. Uh, I mean, do I look like a shopkeeper? What? Anyway, here's a power up that'll let you charge a beam. Oh, there's upgrades too? Sweet. Back already? So thanks for the beam charger upgrade. You bet. You know, the way everything looks, it just felt like I should be able to do that. Yeah, that's why Ray Troid invented it decades ago. Who's Ray Troid? Just a follow-up to an earlier joke. I don't get it. Some will. Not coming back? Hey, is everything alright? It's kind of boring, but I guess I'm okay. No, I mean, it's been a while since your messenger visited. Uh, I don't know, I didn't enter the shops so often myself. You're in the Tower of Time, remember? So? So it should automatically take you forward in time to the next important moment. Which is... Either your messenger enters the shop or dies. Oh. Did your messenger die? How would I know that? By using the scrying orb? If Corbel isn't sent within 10 seconds, your messenger dies for good. And when were you planning on mentioning that? Oh no! Oh no 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 no! We need to fix this. Oh, is it we now? Come on, now is not the time to argue. We have to look at this holistically. Look at this holistically? What does that even mean? It means I'm as lost as you are, but I still want you to think I'm the smartest one here. I'll go fetch the scroll. Hold on. Be right back. I need to talk to the others. What the hell is happening? Okay, we've reached an agreement. You're the one that needs to finish this. Really? Yes, really. You weren't really fit to be a shopkeeper anyway. I'll leave the scroll here with your clothes. Come join us after you've changed. Alright, these robes weren't very comfortable anyway. Kind of chafing. But with that, the mystery deepens. And with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching. And in part 9, things are going to change a little bit. 
See you guys then.